The original uh, plan with the farm was to try and contribute and do something for our world, our planet. Having reached 60, I, was, I had a, a little granddaughter coming along um, and now I've got a couple of them and made me think about the future, what I'm leaving behind. Looking around, it was very hard to, to find what that would be. There's so many things to cure on this, in this world that need help. It's a hemp farm. We, uh, we had to get licensed to, get to, to grow hemp. You know, it became a way of, of dealing with the four main things. You know, the sea, the oceans were filled with plastic and hemp has a, a, you know, a, a, a significant role to play in, new, in a new material that can uh, replace a lot of plastics, I feel. The, the land, the soil really needs a lot of help. The topsoil is really depleted in this country through constant tilling. You know, the air, we have to pull carbon out of the atmosphere, uh, which is a, mass, a massive part of it, and, and human health as well. Those four things really added up to one, one, for me, one plant could actually mean that I didn't have to decide which way that was going to help, or uh, just by the very act of growing that first field, we were pulling a considerable amount of uh, carbon out of the atmosphere and locking it in. There was a, a loose tentative permission to build a house on the site. It was an old cattle yard and that felt like a part of a, an exciting plan. It, it added up to that first year with the first crop we grew. It was a process of grow your own home because we then um, processed the, uh, the fibre to remove the bast fibre from the outside of the plant and use the woody core chopped up on the inside of the plant to put into the walls and to, and to uh, use as the semi-structural main frame sort of of the house. And then we, used, we went back to the bast fibres through uh, a relationship at Cambridge University. We developed the, uh, the, the idea to have a rain screen outside the house so that we could use the fibre that we weren't using inside the house. We could use that on the outside and almost like putting the plant back together. You, you, you've, you've got the, uh, the bass fibre on the outside and we've got the woody core on the inside. The whole project really has been uh, research and development, finding things out and letting the project grow. Because when I first talked to Paloma Gormley, the architect about this, I, you know, we said, I, I said I didn't want to, to build a, a you know, big expansive house. And so I said I wanted to feel like it's uh, part of that culture of, of, you know, living in smaller houses and, uh, you know, helping environmentally. You don't have to heat a whole house for a few people to, to live in and things. So, so we have the attached glass house as part of this, which heats itself. <laughs> Happily, the, the house is off-grid and it's staying off-grid. So we've got solar panels, we've got a, a wind... Um, turbine that is a 1k wind turbine which supplements the solar and uh, we're zero carbon here as well. I mean emotionally it, it feel, I feel really proud of uh, something that, that worked uh, that so often on the way I had no idea that it was going to work and it, it, that it was going to come through. It could have gone wrong, and it did go wrong in, in a number of places, but it could have gone so wrong. Um, and yet it's turned out so right, and I'm, I'm really happy to get a considerable amount of emails from people inspired to do something with hemp. You know, I'm, I'm really happy. I would have been happy just with the family living here, getting uh, such delight and health out of um, living this way. And, uh, but on top of it, we've had uh, a tremendous uh, reaction.